Our topic today is the future of supply chains and who better to talk to than Sherry Heinisch, uh, who I've, I've got to look at my notes here, is the 2019 and 2020 supply chain exec protono. You're going to have to tell, tell us what that's about in a moment, Sherry. Uh, but also known as the supply chain queen, an IBM futurist. We are talking to the right person about the future of supply chain. And that's coming right up. So Sherry, tell us about the future of supply chain. What's happening? I mean, everyone's talking about AI and robots and stuff, but I bet you can tell us a lot more than that. Yeah, I, I really want to talk about the shift in supply chains and how they were traditionally viewed as very transactional, which I'm sure you can, mm. can remember. Um, when I was coming up in supply chain, it was really a lever of cost improvement where lowest price means you're effective and efficient. And I think that as we transition into a purpose economy or even an experience economy, the concept of brand belongingness and values are really becoming a key factor in loyalty and choice. So supply chains are really becoming more strategic and customer centric, where things like digitalizing your planning, execution, orchestration, it's no longer a nice to have. The one thing that I really want to highlight here is the fact that global supply chains power the world and they're very interconnected and complex. And I think that that's one thing that we can take away from what's happening right now in the world. We're all interconnected. We're one planet, one people, and we really need to start thinking about things differently, which includes the transition to sustainable supply chains. So we're going to be maybe talking about sustainability in a following video, but maybe just let's just touch on that in, in this one. What, what does sustainability really mean in supply chains? When I think about sustainable supply chain, it's a Venn diagram of people, planet and prosperity or economic prosperity. But then overlaid with that, if you go up 10,000 feet, it's the idea of industrial, natural, human, and technological systems working in concert to create a better world, a world that we share, where we have a very deep respect for the environment and the social needs that have mm. to be met. And if you think about what's happening in the world right now with COVID and Black Lives Matter movement, and also we are in the middle of a climate crisis, just to throw that in. In, in case people feel uh, up, yeah. <laughs> in it, yeah, um, there's, there's a, a vision, uh, which I actually think of as like a roadmap for sustainable supply chains, and that vision is called the Sustainable Development Goals. And if you haven't heard of that, or if someone watching hasn't heard of it, it's 17 goals that really tie in that ESG, uh, prosperity. That's a bold path for our future. And there are 169 related targets that are supported with ISO standards. So it's very pragmatic. Um, and this is how we understand that interconnectivity, but then also how we measure progress. And when you think about supply chains, there's very tangible context. It's not ivory tower. Responsible consumption and production, for example, um, transition to renewable energy, ethical labor, labor, ethical trade, thinking about the impacts that we have in manufacturing and retail on life on land, life underwater, and just being sustainable and meaningfully contributing to the communities where we operate. All of that is sustainable supply chain. Yeah. You, you make it sound so logical and so simple. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who should we look to for examples of this? Who, who do you see really doing this well in supply chains around the world now? Yeah, I think that if sustainable supply chain, if the SDGs are the roadmap, that shared purpose is, is that vision. And shared purpose can be defined as doing well and doing good. And there's one company that's front of mind, uh, Unilever, for example. Mm. They have a really brilliant way of taking this strategic vision and then breaking it down into operational and tactical goals that are connected at the individual level. And one cool thing to highlight is that Unilever, you know, sustainability isn't philanthropy. It's not an initiative. It's not a project. There isn't a department per se. It's embedded 
in the day in the life process of every single person that works there and they don't leave their values at the door. That's so a it's super yeah. cool. It's super cool. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. So um, tell us a, a little bit more about the uh, the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, what, are, what are some specific ones in there that you think relate? Because there's 16. What, what do you 17. think? 17. Um, what do you think are some of the key ones that really pertain to supply chain well? So... If I had to pick, I would pick SDG 12. So Mm -hmm. this is uh, sustainable production, really Mm -hmm. responsible because Mm -hmm. responsible is, it can be different than sustainable. Mm -hmm. Um, SDG 12 has some key tenants and in that very tangible context for supply chains, um, it's really around the efficient management of natural resources and the way we view materials, which is tied to circular economy. And I think we were going to touch on that today, but you think about, um, you know, encouraging industry and business and consumers to work in concert toward responsible consumption and production. And this includes sourcing, uh, even sustainable sourcing, resource efficiency, which some of those classic like lean levers that we know and love. Um, materials recycling and recycling is not the answer, but it's certainly another tenant of SDG 12. And then procurement practices, product and service information, labeling, all of those things that really speak to transparency. Um, And that's a really, really key takeaway right now that's important in forming that customer experience because people want to trust the products that they buy and that they use. Mm. So um, those would probably be the key highlights for SDG 12. So, so for people working in supply chain now, I mean, it would be very easy to sit back and say, this all has to be driven from the top. This has to be driven by the senior executives, the board. What can I do working in procurement or in distribution or whatever? What, what would you say to them? Are, are there things that they could really start to promote from within the business? Yeah, I think there are. And when people say where to start, I always like to start with first the nine R's of the circular economy. We'll, um, we'll talk is, about that in the next video. So let's not yeah, get right into that yet. Yeah. But, but it's important because yeah. you have to rethink consumer behavior mm, and okay. st- you start by, you know, refusing. Do I really need this item? Do we really need to yeah. buy it? It's smart mm. consumption, responsible consumption. But material choices play a fundamental role in achieving SDG 12 and sustainable supply chain. You you have to ensure that your product is safe, that it's ethically sourced, and that you understand something called the life cycle impacts. So, you know, when you when you think about a material at the material level, it, it's born. Okay, it has a birth certificate and a passport. So as it moves through each node in the supply chain, it's sort of checking in, and you're measuring these things like greenhouse gas emissions or water impact or even material circularity. And, you know, design is another critical point. So the materials that you use and then also your product design, how are you sourcing those raw materials? What are those choices? Because one decision can drastically change the complexity of a product's network, lead time, the risks, the impacts and all of this happens. So when you when you want to build sustainable products, um, you hear a lot about transparency and you think about the importance of supply chains. And this is why I get so excited, because 80 to 90 percent of that rich product information, it happens in supply chains. Mm-hmm. And so do 50 to 85 percent of those sustainability impacts. So supply chains are right at the heart. They are the conduit of change mm. when you think about a better world, in Ab- my opinion. Yeah, Ab- absolutely <laughs> makes sense. So so to kind of wrap this up, we've covered a bit of ground there. Um, if, if, if businesses and supply chains uh, want to be you know, safe for the future, robust enough for the future uh, to do their bit in terms of sustainability. What would be a couple of key things to focus on? A couple of key takeaways. A couple of key takeaways when a company is guided by shared purpose, shared purpose so doing well and doing good, similar to Unilever, and you really embed sustainability 
in your strategy and practice, there are very tangible benefits, increased customer loyalty, investors and consumers want sustainability. It's a priority. You improve your employee relations. There's a ton of, of risk management that's involved with sustainability that I think a lot of people don't understand. You get those operational efficiencies, some of those classic levers that we know as supply chain practitioners. Also supplier relations improve, stakeholder engagement. You get greater profitability, higher corporate valuation and lower cost of capital typically. And this all drives long-term value creation. So beyond that quarterly or annual ticker, you're really looking at you know the five to 10 year play, thinking about how you are impacting things like climate change and social rights and equity. So it's, this is the future. This is where the future of supply chains are headed, in my opinion. What a great way to end. <laughs> Fantastic talking to you, Sherry. Uh, so if you don't know Sherry online, uh, do make sure you hunt her out on LinkedIn. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a couple of web links we can put down below in the description. Uh, known as the Supply Chain Queen and 2019-2020 pro to know. I better look out for you in 2021. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Sherry. Fascinating insights. Thank you, Rob. All the best.